What's up everyone, welcome to Workshop Rebuild. In today's episode, I'll work on the John Deere 400 rear end. I'll remove the hydraulic motor, bring it over here on the table and disassemble everything. Once everything is laid out on the table, I'll have a good look at everything. Most likely the seals and the o-rings have to be replaced. But if I do find any internal damage, I'll get that fixed. Once everything is assessed and I have the new parts in the shop, I will bring you guys back for a rebuild video because many of you guys have been asking for this video down in the comments below and I appreciate that. So if you guys are interested in that, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already because the rebuild video will follow this video very soon. If you guys do not have a Sunstrand Series 15 inline hydraulic motor which is hooked up to a John Deere 400 rear end, you guys can just skip a chapter forward You'll find that down below on the timeline of this video. Just skip the chapter forward to the teardown part of this video. So without further ado, let's take this hydraulic motor off the John Deere 400 rear end. I'm over here on the John Deere 400 rear end. I have this set up on three jack stands, two on the axle and one just up front on the rear end and nothing is touching the hydraulic motor. I set the front jack within a pan so just in case there is any fluid within the hydraulic motor or the pickup tube, it will land in this pan so I don't have to clean the floor up later on. Um, you guys can put some newspaper on the ground or whatever you guys have at home. I did drain the fluid before this so I hope there's not too much. Obviously the filter still carries some oil and if I have to kind of uh, wiggle this out it is possible that there will be a leak here or there. I removed the rear end from the frame of the John Deere 400. I believe it would be possible to remove the hydraulic motor within the frame but it might just be a little bit harder to get to some of the bolts and just to remove everything in general uh, that's why i took it off there are eight bolts holding this in place on the frame nothing too serious and it's really easy to take off and put back in so in today's video i will be focusing on the hydraulic motor i will remove this first of all and to remove the hydraulic motor from the rear end we have four bolts around the perimeter two are right here on the top and two are on the bottom before we remove those four bolts, we have to remove the pickup line, which is off to the left of the hydraulic motor. Uh, it's on the hydraulic motor end. And then we have one more, which is on the rear end. Once that has been removed, I will focus on the four bolts around the perimeter. Uh, this pump is not too heavy, but I would recommend taking the bottom two bolts off first and then the top two. <laughs> John Deere 400 rear end. I'm really thankful I put that pan underneath of the rear end so when I remove the hard line and the hydraulic motor a whole bunch of automatic transmission fluid got caught within that pan. So I'm really thankful for that pan as well as over here on the table I have a pan underneath of everything as well. The hydraulic motor has been pressure washed from the outside but there still is a whole bunch of dirt on it especially around the hydraulic filter Underneath, I will be scraping a little bit of this off before I remove anything. I do not really want to make the internals of this dirty or else I will just have more to clean up later on. Since I have the hydraulic motor laid out on the table, I will share with you guys the tools that I'll be using in today's video. And then once I get to the disassembly of this hydraulic motor, I will just share with you guys a time lapse of the teardown. And once the teardown is complete, I will share with you guys an overview on this hydraulic motor. I will be using Imperial wrenches. I will be using a flat scraper, 
This one happens to be very thin up front, so this is good for removing gaskets, like the one you guys can see right here. I will be using a flathead screwdriver, a pick, which comes in handy for seals or o-rings, and a snap ring plier to remove the snap rings on the end, and possibly if there are any internally. Over here, I have a whole bunch of wrenches, uh, sockets, and allen keys, which I will be using throughout this disassembly. I just shared with you guys most of the tools that I'll be using. I might have forgot something because I do not know how this looks internally, but if you guys do see any other tools that I will be using in today's video, you guys can just pick those tools up and follow along with this teardown. So I will share it with you guys the time lapse right now. Stick around till the end and I will share with you guys the overview with all the parts laid out on the table.
So I'll end the time lapse right here. I disassembled the hydraulic motor from the John Deere 400 series garden tractor. I have the hydraulic motor disassembled and laid out on this white table. Some of the parts are still oily, but they're clean enough to give you guys an overview on all the parts within this hydraulic motor. I will share with you guys more information on this hydraulic motor and how to reassemble it in an upcoming video. So if you guys are interested in that, please hit that subscribe button down below. And if you guys enjoyed this content today, hit that like button as well. So without further ado, let me share with you guys these parts on the white table. Off to the left is the original John Deere oil filter that screws on to this mating piece and this piece then screws on to the main housing. This screws on down below and this is the surface where the o-ring on the oil filter will sit on. Looking at the main housing, we still have two bearings which are needle bearings on the left and on the right. Uh, these two shafts which are over here, that one over there and that one right there. Uh, slide right in on the disassembly. I shared with you guys how I pull those out. On the far outside, we have two seals. These lip seals will be replaced. So this one on this side, and there will be one more on that side. Those two will be replaced. And in the rebuild video, I'll share with you guys the sizes on those down below in the description. We have our main shaft. This happens to be the inlet shaft. So the drive shaft of the John Deere 400 sits right on here and it gets locked in place with this key so it does not move on the shaft and this key transmits your power to the shaft. Uh, you want to make sure on the rebuild that this key is still in good condition. Obviously there is just a little bit of wear but if this would be bad you would want to replace this key. This shaft sits on a radial ball bearing. This bearing seems to be just fine. This bearing sits down below in this housing and it gets locked in place with this snap ring. The front part of this shaft where the drive shaft mounts to also has another part which is the gear rotor and this is your auxiliary hydraulic pump. So this will power your valve block and this pump right here which is a gear pump pushes fluid into the valve block. It is also sealed off with an o-ring around the perimeter of this casting and this happens to be an LH rotating hydraulic motor. So when we look at the serial tag that's on this hydraulic motor, it is a model 90 and the pump happens to be LH, which is a left hand rotating hydraulic motor. Um, it's very handy to have this tag. Moving on to the right, the power that gets transmitted through the shaft goes over to the barrel assembly. This happens to have nine pistons in a circular formation. This will pump and power your motor, which is behind. And this side of the block, so from that block right there to that block is your varial speed. So what that means is you have your linkage, which moves your tractor forward and in reverse. And this is the lever right here, which will activate your forward and reverse. This lever, will go on the bigger shaft of the hydraulic motor and on the John Deere 400, the bigger shaft was off to the right of the hydraulic motor. On the other side of the variable swash plate, we have another pin, but this does not have any function. It just holds the variable swash plate in line to the other side of the lever and lets this rock back and forth to go forward or in reverse. I'll leave this for the rebuild video and I'll get more into detail on this and what to look out for. But this right here happens to be the mid plate or the mid block within this whole assembly from left to right. This block has two O-rings off to the left side of the block. Uh, if you are testing your hydraulic motor, you can hook up your pressure gauge on one of these ports right here and test the pressure of your hydraulic motor. On both sides of this block, we also have gaskets. So these gaskets will have to be replaced. I might make my own and or I might find them online. Besides the mid block, off to the right, we have the same thing. We have the barrel assembly once again. We have the valve and the stationary swash plate, 
So this one is a fixed swash plate and this one does not move. If you guys can see that down below, it is on a certain angle and that one down there does not move. Right here, we have our output shaft that is still in place. I did not take that out yet, but it transfers power onto that spline shaft on the back. That spline shaft then hooks up to the beveled gear and the beveled gear powers your rear end. The beveled gear is held in place with this snap ring and that ties everything in together on the back end of the hydraulic motor. There are exactly three elbow fittings. Each of these elbow fittings have an O-ring. I will list these in the description of the rebuild video that will be coming out soon. And we have two end plugs, which as well have an O-ring on each of them. So in total, we have five O-rings right here. We have two in the mid block and we have two seals, which are on either side of the front or the main block. So all of these parts and products will be down in the description in the rebuild video. This big gasket that you guys see right here acts as a shim between the hydraulic motor, which is the rear or the back surface of this plate and the rear end on the John Deere 400. So I gave you guys the time-lapse video on the John Deere 400 hydraulic motor, which is a Sundstrand Series 15 inline hydraulic motor. I gave you guys an overview on all the parts that are laid out on this white table. I will have to clean them all off and I'm gonna make sure that everything is perfectly clean before I give you guys a rebuild video. I still have to purchase some parts for this rebuild. Once I have that, I will get ready and make sure that hydraulic motor gets put back together very soon so you guys can just follow along after this video. If you guys have any questions about the disassembly of this hydraulic motor, leave a comment down below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. There are always questions that arise and maybe I didn't cover everything, but I tried my best to cover everything and get you guys some good angles with this camera here. So yeah, leave a comment down below. Hit that like button if you haven't already and consider subscribing if you enjoy the content you see. So I'm going to get these parts cleaned up and get you guys a rebuild video very soon. So stay tuned.